What is going on everyone? My name is Jason and these are the top five iOS 14 features. Okay, after a lot of anticipation and a ton of beta testing, if you have an iPhone, you can finally rejoice. iOS 14 is officially available to the public to download. And no lie, it's a pretty significant upgrade to the OS and no doubt packed with a ton of features. But it's almost to the point where it's hard to pinpoint some of the best changes as there's so many. So today I thought I'd put together a quick video going over five amazing iOS 14 features that will really change the way you use your iPhone. Now, most of what I'm gonna be covering aren't as obvious in the new operating system, but definitely features you don't want to miss out on. Now, before we get into the review, if you're into checking out the latest consumer tech products before you buy them, or if you're just a tech head like me, I make a video like this every single week. So make sure to hit that thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe so you can be the first to know when a new JSR review is out and you don't miss anything. And quick question for you guys. If you've already upgraded to iOS 14, what's your favorite new feature? Curious to get your thoughts. Let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments down below. Okay, let's start off with one of the easiest things that you could do with your upgraded iPhone that you couldn't do before. When it comes to browsing the internet, even though you can download the browser of your choice, the default has always been Safari. And though I understand why Apple would make it this way, I've always been a Google Chrome guy myself. And I'm happy to say that in iOS 14, you can set Chrome as your default browser, and it's super simple to do. All you have to do is go to settings, scroll down to the Chrome app, click in and you'll see a new option that says default browser app. You'll likely notice that it's set to Safari. And if you click on it, you'll see the option to change it to Chrome. And it's as simple as that. You'll notice that all the web suggestions via search now return Chrome links, and it'll be the same for any links that are sent to you via text, etc. Now I have a feeling that Apple deliberately didn't go over this in detail, but it's super convenient, especially if you're deep in Google's ecosystem like I am. Okay, next up is probably the coolest feature you can take advantage of in iOS 14, and that's back tap. You can literally make it so when you either double tap or triple tap on the back of your iPhone to initiate a specific action for both. Now, important caveat here, the back tap feature only works for the iPhone 8 or newer. So sorry if you're holding on to something older, you're unfortunately not gonna be able to take advantage of this. But if you have a more recent device, let me show you how easy it is to set this up. First, go to your settings, then you're gonna go to accessibility. From there, you're gonna go into your touch option. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see the option for back tap. Once you click in, you'll see the option for both double and triple tap. And when you select one, you'll see a list of system actions you can map the associated tap to. Now for me, I take a ton of screenshots on my phone. So I'm gonna map the double tap to take a screenshot. And I find that it's a pain pulling down from the top of the phone to access control center. So I'm gonna make it so I can toggle it using the triple tap. And check this out. I'll double tap on the back of my phone and bam, just like that, it takes a screenshot. I'll triple tap on the back and voila, it opens up Control Center. Now back tap is by far the biggest feature that feels most like a hack. I mean, Apple never even hinted at the idea that the back of the phone had a capability to register anything like this. And you can actually get pretty creative in terms of what you can have these taps do. Something I'm gonna to return to a little later in this video. Okay, next up is a lot more of a straightforward feature that many of us have been waiting forever on and that's picture in picture multitasking. This allows users to shrink the window of certain apps that are still running and navigate to other apps at the same time. Frankly, it's a long time coming and I know Android users are scoffing at their screens saying that they've had this feature forever, but it's a welcome addition to the iPhone and it's better late than never. And Apple did a good job with implementation. The screen is very easy to move around, extremely fluid and not jittery at all. It can be resized using pinch gestures. You can even slide the video box completely out to the side if you need access to your full screen. And the cool thing is the audio can still be heard when doing so. Great if you're watching a music video or something like that. Now the main issue with picture in picture right now is that it mostly only works with native Apple apps like Apple TV and FaceTime calling. Notably, it doesn't currently work for YouTube. As of the time I'm recording this, looks like YouTube is only allowing this feature to work on iPhones that have a paid premium membership, which really sucks. But on the other side of that coin, Netflix has already updated their app and it works seamlessly on iOS 14. Hopefully we'll see more apps follow. Overall, a great feature that makes your iPhone a lot more fun to use. Okay, next up is not something new new, but it's a feature that's been updated and one to me that can completely change the way that you use your iPhone. I will also say that this is probably the most complicated feature and one that many users won't bother with, but hear me out on this one because it can truly be a game changer. And what I'm talking about are Siri shortcuts. Now this isn't gonna be a full on tutorial on how to use shortcuts, but in case you don't know what they are, it's a way to put a lot of different actions you do regularly on your iPhone, kind of on a speed dial. Now it can be something super simple like creating a shortcut to either text or call someone you do regularly, or you can have a shortcut do something pretty complicated like tweeting out a picture really quickly. 
Now you have to have the shortcuts app on your phone. And if you go into the gallery, there's a ton of useful shortcuts already pre-made that you can take advantage of. Again, I'm no expert by any means as I'm still learning how to use this feature, but let me show you how you can create a shortcut on your own. And let's use the example of creating one to tweet out a picture quickly. So first you'll click on the plus button to create a new shortcut. Then you'll need to add the first action. Now after messing around with this for a while, I know I have to start by having the shortcut prompt me to select a photo I want to tweet. So I'm going to search for the photos app. And when I do, you'll see a list of commands the app can support. I'm going to click on select photos. And after doing that, I'm going to add another action. I'm going to search for the Twitter app and I'm going to choose the action tweet. Then I'm going to click next and I'm going to name the shortcut. This is important because this is what Siri will listen for. If you want to use Siri for this action, I'm going to call it tweet picture and we should be done. Okay, let's give this a test run. We'll click on the shortcut and you'll see that it immediately does the first action of having me select a photo. After I do, it automatically goes to my next action of creating a new tweet with the selected picture ready to go. Now this is super convenient if you're posting on Twitter often and you could easily map the same action to something like Instagram or Facebook. And really this is just the tip of the iceberg in terms of what shortcuts are capable of. There are shortcuts with 30 plus actions associated with them that are incredibly complex, but at the same time, extremely useful. Now I keep my shortcuts relatively simple. I often use one that will automatically take me home via Google Maps and another that will let me know how much I should tip on a bill, things like that. Now the usefulness of shortcuts is to me really taken advantage of in iOS 14 because of one key feature that also is the last one on this list and that's finally having the ability to have widgets on your home screen. Now there's a ton you can choose from and this is another feature that's way overdue, but one of my favorite widgets available is, you guessed it, the widget for shortcuts. This essentially puts the shortcut buttons on your home screen so they're super easy to access and man, they can really change the way you use your phone. It's basically like having a ton of customized buttons on your home screen. It adds such a level of customization to the iPhone that generally has always been so guardrailed. It's really refreshing and the potential here is legitimately exciting. Now quick circle back to the back tap feature. Remember I said you can get pretty creative on what you can get those taps to do? Well, you can actually map either the double or triple tap to a shortcut you created. And I created one to launch the Google Assistant, which to me is leaps ahead of Siri. So now when I triple tap on my iPhone, look what pops up. It's a pretty awesome hack. And again, really underscores the potential of what you can do in iOS 14 if you take the time to learn the ins and outs. Okay, that's about it for the five amazing iOS 14 features that will change the way you use your iPhone. Which one did you find to be the most useful? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe if you guys wanna see more videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.